everyone. Welcome to Dean's QL. My name is Dinesh Priyankara, Microsoft MVP and IT consultant. We have been using AI models, features, APIs, functions for years, uh, you know, when we have to do an implementation, uh, specifically on data engineering. Most of the time, uh, you know, we needed to configure all these AI models in advance using some other services. Of course, you can say that uh, we there are you know uh, python libraries or packages yes we could use existing uh, libraries and packages but more often we had to create or configure models ourselves now the good news with microsoft fabric if you are going to implement your data solution using microsoft fabric fabric now offers pre-built ai models you can simply use them you can use instantly with no configuration needed and the best part of it you don't need AI or data science skills to start with it. It's really simple, straightforward, and it is designed for everyone, not just for data engineers or software engineers. Anyone can simply use these uh, functions and features. Okay, so uh, this is what I'm going to do as a part of this video. Let's explore this exciting feature, AI services in Fabric. So with the next slide, I'm going to explain you uh, what is Azure AI services and how we are going to see Azure AI services in Fabric. Okay, after that, I'll do a quick demo, but I'm not going to cover all the functionalities of the features available as a part of this service. I'll be taking you through uh, a you know, set of functions available for text analytics. Okay, uh, that's why I have named this video as text analytics made easy. All right. Okay, so let's explore and see. All right, so what is Azure AI services? Well, uh, it is not something entirely new. I'm sure that you have heard about Azure Cognitive Services. You might have used Azure Cognitive Services before. So that's what we see as Azure services now. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, even if you do not have AI or data science skills, uh, you can easily use these services as a part of your uh, you know, implementation. Now, keep it in mind, uh, this is currently in preview and it comes with some limitations. So this means you should carefully consider using it in production environment for now. Also, the features available right now are not the full set you will see once it uh, becomes generally available, okay? All right, how does this integrate with Microsoft Fabric? There are two ways you can access Azure AI services in Fabric, as you see with this slide. The first option is pre-built AI models. Second option is bring your own key. So the first option, pre-built AI model, is the recommended way of accessing these uh, AI services uh, because of, uh, you know, you, you can see some of the reasons, right? So you no configuration required on Azure AI. So you don't need to go uh, to Azure um, or Azure AI and then configure models, uh, you know, set parameters and all. No, you don't need to do anything like that. You can simply, uh, you know, call these APIs as a part of your, let's say, your notebook code, okay? And the good thing with this is it works with all SKUs. This is not going to be limited to F64 or above. Now, you know that certain features are available, uh, you know, uh, only on F64 or, or the higher SKUs. Okay, even uh, you know that there's a fabric item called AI skills that is also available as a part of F64 or higher. But when it's come to this, this works with all SKUs. I have tested this with uh you know even f2 all right and other good thing is you are not going to see a separate bill simply it consumes your capacity so you will be seeing uh you know the billing part when it's come to uh, you know usage of ai services that will be seen as a part of your capacity bill okay right now how we're going to use this uh you know if you're going to use this first option so there are two ways of using these services, Synapse ML, RESTful APIs. Now, let's say you have a notebook and you use that notebook for processing your data. Okay, let's say you're processing data um, in your bronze layer, you have to process and then place it in silver layer. And uh, you have to do some, uh, you know, operations against some of the text in your data sets. Okay, so then you can use Synapse ML, right? So as a part of Synapse ML, uh, not just for Synapse, Synapse ML, for both Synapse ML and RESTful APIs, uh, you will see Azure OpenAI services. You will see functions, uh, you know, available for text analytics, and you will see function available for um, Azure AI Translator as well. So, as a part of Azure OpenAI services, um, you can use GPT uh, 3.5 Turbo, GPT 4, um, even text embedding. Okay, all these things are available as a part of Azure OpenAI service. 
and when it comes to text analytics um there are a lot okay um you know you can you know do things like language detection uh sentiment analysis you know those are things i'm going to show you uh, as a part of my demo okay uh, in addition to that uh, you know name entity recognitions uh, key phrase extractions likewise there are you know couple of text analytics available uh, and then you have uh, two functions under azure ai translator one is translate um, and i'm going to show you that part and the second one is translate okay so both functions are available as a part of azure ai translator so all these things are available uh, you know if you go with pre-built ai models second one it's all about you go and configure everything in azure and then you consume there are enough of libraries for connecting with azure ai services so you use those libraries and then the, you know consume or just call these apis for get whatever the things you want to get done okay right now let me show you the way of uh, using some of the uh, you know functions available under text analytics and azure ai translator okay uh, not using the second option we'll be using the first option which is pre-built ai models okay this is the code that is the notebook i have created for this demo um, so you can see it has a couple of uh, code cells um, you can see uh, uh, this notebook is uh, integrated with a lake house that because um, uh, I'm trying to get some data from one of the files stored in the lake house. And then once uh, the text part is uh, performed, I'll be saving the result as a data table. Okay, then we can go to the lake house, open the data table and see the data. Okay, right. Let me uh, collapse this explorer. Then we can see the code clearly. Okay, see the first part. Uh, I have a file uh, like product feedback CSV. Um, so I can simply use this part because the lake house is integrated with the uh, notebook. Okay, um, so it's just a simple code. Spark dot read format is CSV and it has a header. And then um, you know I can see data by using display. So let's have a look on this data first. Let me run this. Uh, it will take some time for start the session and uh, uh, show the data. Okay, um, so. Uh, this data set or the csv file contains some feedbacks uh you know received for products okay now remember these are not really uh feedback given by customers all these are generated data okay so you might not see uh you know the comments or the feedback uh, as you know sort of realistic comments okay right anyway this is what we see we can see the product id uh, ratings for the shop rating for the service and this is the feedback okay you can see uh, these feedbacks in different languages right and even the language has been uh, recorded in this csv file you can see french german uh, english okay multiple languages all right now let's say this is what we get from the source and uh, you know when it's come to processing this data set let's say uh, you know the business requirement is check and see whether this feedback is really good or bad so which means we need to get the sentiment value of it okay and then uh, let's say uh, if it is not in english this has to be translated to english okay um, so we are talking about three operations against this data set first one is uh, you know converting or detecting the language that's the first one okay check and see whether it's in english or not um, then the second one is uh, you know translate it to english if it is not in english and the third one is generate the sentiment value of uh, you know the feedback given okay so this is the code i have written for that let me scroll down um, so i'll be uh, importing importing these libraries uh, or the packages so synapse ml that's what we use with this code okay and then uh, you can see um, uh, i i, I then you can see i use ml services language translate and then for uh, some operations i use sql functions as well so you can see uh, i have tried out ml cognitive dot language and that's what you see with microsoft docs you can use it you can use synapse dot ml dot cognitive dot language not an issue even cognitive dot translate you can use it but when you execute it you will see a message saying uh, ml cognitive is a, a duplicated item uh, and then you will see a recommendation saying use ml services instead okay that's why i have commented out ml.cognitive and then use ml services okay 
Right. So these are the libraries uh, or the packages we uh, want for performing those three operations. And now this is, let's have a look on this code. See, uh, I'm calling analyze text. Okay. And then what I'm uh, just configuring the model. Okay. Um, saying that uh, the text column is feedback. Okay. And what I want is basically language detection. Okay. That's the functionality I want to use with this feedback and give me the output in response. All right. So I configure this and then I'll be using this model for uh, transforming. So when I, when I call transform, I have to pass the data frame, which is this. All right. Okay. Right. Um, so see, uh, when I call transform, I expect an output call response. Okay. And then I extract documents from response and then I consider uh, the extract or the documents as documents. Okay. You can see with column. And then all I need is detected language name from documents. All right. So I simply extract this and then set with this column. So at the end, I'll be seeing a column called detected language and that will have this name value. Okay. That's the first one. Second, again, I'm calling analyze text. I'm, I'm configuring the model uh, for calling analyze text. Um, text column is feedback. And what I, this time, what I want is sentiment analysis. So last time that was language detection. This time, sentiment analysis. And again, output uh, is going to be called as response. Um, so I'm going to simply use uh, response.documents to uh, get the whole thing extracted. And I'll be placing it to documents. And then I'll be using documents.sentiment to uh, you know set values to a new column called sentiment. So at the end of this code, I'll be seeing a new column called sentiment, which has this value. Okay. Right. Now we have the, the language detected and the sentiment value as well. And now let's uh, uh, perform the translation. Same thing. I call uh, translate. Okay. And then the text column is feedback. Uh, I can set multiple languages. Okay. Now in this case, I have just configured only for uh, English. But you can, uh, you know, put a comma and then add another language. Likewise, you can simply pass a collection to a uh, set to language uh, parameter. Okay. Um, and then I get response. Um, from the response, I extract translation and then I set the result to translations column. And then I'll be simply taking the first element of translation. Okay. Uh, and then call the property called text. Why I see a collection like this for translation? That because th this gives you translations for multiple languages. Now, in this case, we have used only one, which is English. And that's why I have hard coded the index as zero, right? But if you have multiple languages, you can use the index or you can have sort of a for each uh, to iterate through all the, the language uh, all the language values and get the value you want right okay but in, in this case we have only one that's why i have uh, used index zero to uh, you know populate this column right now i have all three columns um these are the three columns detected language sentiment and translations that's all okay um don't worry about this code this is all about uh, replacing column names uh, uh, you know make sure that we can simply create the data table because sometimes you cannot create data table if the column names have, uh, you know, odd characters, spaces, things like that. So there are some spaces in the column name. So I, I remove those spaces and then I select these columns, product ID, uh, you know, stop rating, uh, sorry, shop rating, uh, service rating and the feedback. Okay. And the language, this language is, uh, you know, uh, that came from the CSC file. But these three columns were generated through AI functions. Okay. And at the end, I save it as a delta table and the table name is product feedback. Okay. Let's execute this. But before that, we need to import all the required libraries. Let me execute this one. Done. And then let me execute this cell. Right. So generally, this takes about um, 
two three minutes that's what i have noticed but let's see once this part is completed let's go to the lake house and see the table okay code execution is uh, completed you can see it has taken about seven almost eight minutes uh, we can write a display um, we can use display function for seeing uh, the result of the table uh, but let's go to the lake house uh, let me refresh this and see i should see a new table you can see a table called product feedback let me click on it okay so i can see the data let me collapse this right product id shop rating service rating and the feedback this is the original one and language this is also uh you know something came with the csv file and last three column these are the things we generated using ai services okay so detector language you can see it tallies with the uh, everything i see korean chinese german yes okay so it you know it, it matches not an issue but i have seen some uh uh, not exactly issues uh, sometimes when you see the feedback with uh, let's say uh, you know let's say the feedback is given with Chinese language and a uh, lot of uh, English words and characters are there as well so in that case um, language detection uh, you know might not work really well okay so that's something you need to check and see and the sentiment uh, you can see um, I'm sure that we we should see both positive negative values all positive we, we can write a select uh, sql statement and see um, and then we can see the translation as well oh, we can actually use uh, sql endpoints and then we can uh, see the values of these three columns clearly so let me open the sql endpoint i can see the table anyway let me refresh Right, this is the table. Uh, I'll simply get the code written. Let me cancel this. Uh, let me say, um, let's check and see whether this has all type of sentiment values. All right, so you can see uh, there are records for positive, negative, and mix. Let's have a look on some of the translation as well. Uh, I'll limit it to top 100 and then let's say uh, feedback and translation. Yeah, so I can see some uh, translation as well. So there are different type of, uh, you know, uh, feedback so I can clearly see it right so this is how you use azure ai uh, services uh, within microsoft fabric without configuring anything in azure ai environment all right you straight away call these uh, functions and then uh, use it as a part of your data engineering workloads all right that's all from my end um, so if you have any thoughts on this if you need any clarification or if you have any question feel free to use the comment section okay um, so i'll try my best to response immediately in addition to that uh, if you have uh, come across or if you have learned something additional related to this please share all these things because that will be helpful for me um, and uh, it will be helpful for others as well all right okay uh, you know that's all uh, thanks for watching